football. We know that ain't what the problem is, right? Yeah. You know, we just not thinking of something that I want to make sure it works on there now. It's right there, Dave. Oh, yeah, that sucker's gonna work now like a top. I told you you could fix it. Oh, buddy. Oh, let's work. All that for nothing. Come back, and get if you don't get your ditcher and do these, this yeah. little bit, it's just one field in those 248 yeah. rows, and then we'll finish up a tiller. I've got a gut feeling this is gonna be a good year. The farmer is the eternal optimist. We farm together as a family. If we all put our heads together, I don't know what we couldn't achieve. Hopefully we hit 90 bushel. I think we could do it. Just have healthy plants and a good return on investment. One of the worst things about farming is making a decision on planting depth. A quarter of an inch on your depth sometimes, you won't get a stain. As you can see, my pinky ring's empty, so obviously I didn't win. <laughs> With this class of guys that's in Podfathers, I mean, anyone could win. Well, that showed you, so it wouldn't work. So we're thinking electrical, because yesterday on this seed cart, the same thing happened, it was electrical. So we spent an hour tracing down wires, cutting wires, moving the solenoid from one to the other, and it was a, a set screw in the shaft that runs the, the motor the whole time. A lot of times you can work really hard on something for a long time and it not be the right thing. We don't have about a five gallon bucket left. Can we put it in, we can put them in there, can't we? There's about two bags left in this cart. As soon as David Earl plants down where he can get those in it, I'm gonna send Daniel up there and you'll have to go in there in the, in the warehouse and find them. They're in the middle bay. There's some Agrigold 4820s in black boxes. Get a couple of those out where when he gets there, we can dump two boxes in the front hopper. I've got Podfather team here, so Lane and I are gonna be a little bit tied up, but I, I wanna continue to keep everything going. We planted a thousand acres yesterday. Between the rice, the corn, and the cotton, we planted a thousand acres. How many acres of beans you have left? There's 4,200, and we've planted 1,800. So what does that leave, 2,400, I guess? You asked me last year if I was gonna change anything. I said I was gonna plant my corn later and my beans earlier. Yeah, I think it's gonna pass the plant early because the inversion's in the market. So we're still trying to get everything in as early as we can. We can go look at the burnt tractor today if you want to, too. And we can do a little, kind of a little section maybe on safety. All right, so what I did, I sent Chris on to Boydale so that he could get that command out before, before the wind gets too high there at the monument. So I, went, I told him to go do that. When he got through, finished with that, then come back, get on the ditcher. He's gonna take his ditcher and come over here and do these few fields and go to Tiller and catch that up. If we don't, we're gonna forget about it. Right. That's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have him follow you down there, let you plant two or three rounds, pump the rest of it in you. Then we'll be able to take this car and go get, go get the other seed. We gotta get the 4820s and I need to figure out how much. That's the same tractor, Seth, that we, me and you were on earlier. We had a bad weekend, but we also had a miracle at the same time, to be honest with you. As you can see behind me, this tractor, $350,000 tractor, or it was. Uh, this weekend, the operator came between this big country pole that's behind us and this water hydrant. And as you see over there, there was a a telephone pole and he caught the guide wire of the telephone pole. So when, they, when he caught the guide wire of the telephone pole, pole broke, put the hot wires on, on the right hand side of the tractor on the tires. They said it was 16,000 volts coming that was laying on that tractor. He had no choice but to try to bail off. It was that or, or be in that tractor. So he jumps off the tractor, 
gets a small shock, small tingling feeling, uh, nothing major, was 100% fine. So that's the miracle of the story. We lost a really nice tractor, but we saved a really good man. So we get in such a hurry trying to get things done in a timely manner that sometimes we overlook safety. So I've never had a piece of equipment burn in my life. Of course, we've got good Farm Bureau insurance, so that'll kick in. But it, it's not about that. It's not about the value of this tractor, but it's more about the value of life. You know, and everybody that works here is, is like family to me, so it hit us pretty hard just thinking of what could have happened. So good Lord took care of him when he jumped off. We are very thankful he's safe and just slow down is all I can tell you and take the extra time it takes to be safe. Hope this never happens to you and hope it never happens to us again. We want the bottom canopy to be healthy with a good fungicide. We use Revitec on it. But on our farm, we got an average of six bushel better with the Revitec fungicide than any other fungicide. Doing a lot of different trials, and one of them is Concept Agritech. We're doing a in-furrow starter trial. The thing I'm the most excited to try is a bunch of bugs. It's a biological. We're excited to see how they work out. Good morning. It's a nice day today. It'd be dry enough to plant tomorrow, but unfortunately it's supposed to rain tonight. So, that's the way it is. We're ready. We got all our equipment out. Everything worked pretty good, making the final adjustments. So when it does dry out, we can get back in the field and we won't look back. A lot of our fertility products come in and soil amendments, like all this money stuff. We've got a truckload of boron, we got a truckload of zinc, we got our secret stuff. Our first truckload of Monty's product came in for the year. Calcium Plus, which is uh, their liquid carbon, plus a little bit of calcium. Uh, we got some Midnight on there, which is a 1084 plus iron, zinc, and sulfur, which I love that combination. And then uh, Surge, which is our fulvic acid we use for uh, mainly foliar applications. So excited about that coming in. You gonna get your doors? A lot of corn planting going on around here, and it doesn't matter where you look, if there's a pod father or a corn warrior involved, agrigold there as well. So uh, we've been using planting agrigold corn seed for years, and it is the highest quality seed that I plant. Consistent seed size and go through the planter just like it's supposed to. Give us a good picket fence stand. Today, it's actually wet, so we thought we'd take some time to sit down with my crop consultant, Joey Branch with Pro Ag Services, as well as uh, our BASF rep, Jimmy Pongetti. And glad to have him here as well as Joey, and we're gonna talk about soybean uh, strategy, production strategy, or part of it at least. Anytime we get a chance to go across the field early, especially, we need a residual herbicide. It's early in the year, we'll talk about burn down real quick, which is typically a paraquat or glyphosate. And along with that same shot, we'll put in a little, typically paraquat behind the planter. It's very inexpensive. Put it in there, start clean. I think you're exactly right. You, you do everything you can up front to start clean. Uh, that's the best chance you've got. That's, that's the best opportunity you've got to keep that field clean. You know, getting that early application done and just making sure we stay ahead of the game because once we get behind the weed, it's very tough to catch up. So yeah, that'll go a long way and that'll actually move us all the way into fungicide. I think I'm on record as saying I used Revitec on every acre last year, and I did, and I intend on using it again this year. Revitec's a, a brand new chemistry uh, introduced about two years ago, or a brand new uh, product. It's got three modes of action. You've got uh, great preventative as well as cur curative action, plus you've got the plant health benefits. All right, so I'm sitting back up now. Brittany's in the room, I'm wide, I'm wide open. 
So here in about 15 minutes, we put in a crop, taking it all the way to harvest with Joey's expertise, Jimmy's expertise, and BASF products. It's a great combination, and uh, looking forward to seeing y'all in a few days. And $14 beans uh, makes this a lot easier. So last September I bought uh, Belted Galloways. These are Belted Galloways. They're a uh, heritage breed. They're from Scotland. And by the next Monday I had 13. Chloe, Chloe had a baby. This is a bull tiger. And they're really tame. You can do whatever you want to with them. I hadn't tried to ride them, but they, they're pretty tame. They love treats. So let me grab a handful of treats. Most cattle wouldn't let you do that. So these are all the yearling heifers. Let's go see the other ones real quick for the rain. Ran the Copperhead Pearl Cruiser this year. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Just a simple addition to the planter for better closing. We got some Monty's product. We use it in a lot of other crops. It's a changer. We focus on things that complement soil biology, things that complement soil health. It just keeps giving back. What's going on, Gray? What's going on? Good how are you? Here. Glad to be here. Chad. Chad, how are you? So I guess welcome to season two of the Pod Fathers, right guys? Maybe I won't come a second this year. I don't think you will. Maybe I can drag you down with me. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we gonna look at today? We're gonna go look at some fields? We are. Good. Mud. Is it muddy here? Very. Had a lot of rain. So your family's from here, you start, you, you kind of started here, you ended up back here. Yeah. Then you got into doing some NCGA trials and did you win, you won West Virginia? Yeah, we won West Virginia and we won Maryland last year, irrigated okay. and non-irrigated. Like what kind of challenge do you face? Do you feel like you are having trouble getting to a yield on your soybeans? So the biggest thing I think we have is sunlight with the mountains. It's been a while since we've had a drought. It seems like, you know, I put eight pivots in. Ever since we put them in, it seems like it's, we've gotten so much rain that we don't need well, them. You know when you make your most amount of money with irrigation is when you don't turn it on. Yep. Yeah, another biggest uh, battle we have is getting our equipment across to the other side. You gotta take logging roads to get around. It can be challenging. So you run equipment down some of these logging roads that come through the mountains? Yep. I'm afraid to go down a small hill at home. Like, that's crazy to me. Well, let's go hit the fields and see what we got down there, see if the ground's any good. Okay. What is your planning date that you're looking for? Do you have a, this is when I want, is go time? I'm basing it more off of a 10 day forecast, so right. I have guys that have already planted corn and beans. When the, the 10 day, it's, in the 40s and in the evening. What does your next 10 days look like? It's the cold rain that concerns me more than anything. If we had 45 degree soil temperatures out there in a 10 day, we're warming up to 60 degrees, I wouldn't be afraid to cut it loose. With the weather that we've had, it's been so wet. And like I said, the 10 day, it looks pretty chilly at, in, at night. So we're concerned about that up in the mountains. And when you told me what time of morning it is when sun actually sets on these fields, it's, it's like- It's about 11 o'clock. For the yeah, day. I mean, that's crazy. Let's go uh, check the bean field out and the okay. corn field that we won last year at the state of Maryland. So this is the field we won uh, last year, um, the corn contest. I got 296, and this field's in Allegheny County, Maryland. 
this was a whole bunch of different hay fields that we had here. And there was a block of pine trees the power plant had planted, just like those over there. We took all them out, made it one big field. Our pump station is up there. So you pump out right across that, right over there, out of the river? Right out of the river. Pretty straight here. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it's kind of wet, that inch of rain. But you know what, an inch of rain here, this is a lot better shape than my ground is. I get an inch of rain on mine. You wouldn't even want to walk. You couldn't walk out. That's how we were before the tile drainage. Yeah, we were. I mean, so the tiles made that big of a difference for you guys, and it's just keeping it off here. Yeah. This is really dried out for having the rain yeah. it's had on it. Yeah, I can't believe that you've had, you know, you've had an inch of rain and you can still do this. You can't do this with my dirt. My dirt would be like, you'd be playing with mud. I mean, it's wet, but it's really dried out a lot. So what exactly are you, like, what's your plan? You're gonna hit it with a field cultivator and then you're gonna plant this, or? No, we're gonna run the soil water over it. Oh, okay. And uh, wait a week or two and come back through. That's real soil right there. Is that the real stuff? Yep. Let's head back to the shop and... You gotta show me all your tools? Yeah, my tools. Okay, let's go see them. Yeah, it's tight to get in this cab because I got to keep that boom cradle over there in the transport mode because I can't get across the bridge if it's out. Because it's tight, tight. So tight. I mean, does the combine get through there okay? You got to go over the mountain. So you're coming down the side of the mountain with the combine because you can't get across the bridge? Or go through the river. Or, or drive through the river. How do you know how deep it is in the river? You got to walk it first? When you go across the bridge, we got an island out there. Hard Seriously. part is find the rocks, and when you hit a rock, yeah. Y'all are fighting some serious challenges around here. Wild and wonderful, baby, wild and wonderful. Oh, yeah. We want the bottom canopy to be healthy with a good fungicide. We use Revitec on it. But on our farm, we got an average of six bushel better with the Revitec fungicide than any other fungicide. Here at Advanced Yield, we're not only just a consulting company, we are now offering a full lineup of select crop inputs. No middleman, for the farmer, by a farmer. Unleash your crop's potential. Visit online or give me a call today. Ran the Copperhead Pearl Cruiser this year. Been very good, very happy with it. A lot more aggressive on the closing. Just a simple addition to the planter for better closing. Welcome to season two of Podfathers. As you can see, my pink earring's empty, so obviously I didn't win. <laughs> It's April 19th. We've been uh, hard at it since April 15th on beans. We got about 4,000 acres of beans this year putting out. So last year at this time, we only had uh, 350 acres of beans out. And we was shut down on beans till the end of very last day of May, first week of June. So having all the beans in the ground between April 15th and April 20th this year should be a great advantage for us. That's more of our typical time frame, but in the past three years, we haven't had a typical time frame. You know, we're still too early. Mother Nature could wipe us out at any given moment. You know, with snow coming in Tuesday night, that could really play an effect to it. We're trying to do everything that I can to control the controllables to where we don't have to fight it as bad, so we're trying to play in the Mother Nature's hands here. Hopefully for the bean side of things, it will work out better than it did last year. I can't stress enough how important it is to get the beans out early. That's going to be a, a huge advantage to us. Hopefully we get more rain than last year. Contest side of things, uh, I got one of the fields at my house I was intercropping last year. Uh, we did something a little different on that this year. Maybe you guys will be able to get a chance to see that in another ep episode. Trying something new, something different, hopefully it works out. We're running four gallons of uh, water and furrow. 
with some Exalt, and then Bella, and then Nutec SIIF from, from Terramax. That's a liquid inoculant. Uh, going this cold in the soil, we've seen a great benefit from that. We try not to get too cute for it. We're trying to get as much activity as we can within the soil jump started. Uh, and especially when it's cold like this, it needs all the help that it can get. You always start out, so right now we're on plan A. Things are still not perfect, but things are good. Once we get the crop up and out of the ground, we get started. Now we're gonna start thinking about weed control. What are we gonna do for food-wise for them, feeding them on, foliar feeding and different things like that. But the first thing is we gotta get them up out of the ground and get a good stand. So this year we're gonna wait for all the beans to be emerged, come back in with a post-emergent, emergent, and that's where we're gonna have all of our residuals and for our weed control then. We're gonna come back in with the zidua. But when you're planting early or this cold, we want to come with a post for, for the weed control. We don't want to hurt the germ at all. We want everything to come up, assess the situation, get the ground temperatures warmer, get the weeds going, and then we'll come in and knock them out and kill them. So we're really concentrated on trying to break down the fodder from last year's crop to release the nutrients for, for this year's crop. So we got to make sure that we're doing a really good job of burying it, breaking it down, and getting as, as small as pieces that we can. So I'm in one of the planters, a junior, or Doug McCauley. He's another planter. We're actually getting ready to join up with him right now. We're going to join his work. So we make sure everything looks good there. So now we're fully ready to go. Corey's got the last pass in the field where we're leaving here, we're just gonna cross this ravine. There's 27 acres in this field. Instead of cutting him off and both of us being at the wrong end, we'll switch fields and do this one. Well, my rule on the farm is I'm a farm manager. I've been with Corey's dad for 33 years. I've known Corey since he's two years old. So I'm just kind of here, you know, I, I do the planting, the spraying, the drive combine in the fall, do it all. Uh, goals this year is definitely to do better. You know, with this class of guys that's in Podfathers, I mean, anyone could win. You know, that's my goal. Getting the yields that they're get is gonna take perfection, you know. So if I can be in that 125 to 150 bushel range, I'll be tickled to death. You know, we got a great crew from everybody that's working with us. It's not just one person. We all take pride into it, especially with the competition that we're facing from Temple, to Matt, to Perry. I mean, all these guys, they're just, they're class A growers on every crop. So it's, I got my work cut out for me trying to beat, beat these guys. I just want to be respectable and be in the mix. The soil is the best that we've had in a long, long time. Planting conditions are perfect. With the rain coming, you don't know what the right decision is. What do we do best with planting soybeans? 